welcome back. Say we are coming to learn about tomato production. You have a cut tomato production once. Yes, there are so many kind of vegetables. But once you want to start any vegetable, you have to do your inquiry on a specific vegetable that you think say I highly consume in your society, in your country or wherever you find yourself. Because you can't just stand up so could be a bibi akeke. Meanwhile the thing is not something that they, they like or the 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 demand is there. So you have to first of all look at certain crops that once you produce you have buyers to what to purchase and you have consumers too for that. And then you have decided to study tomatoes and bell pepper. We are coming to tackle tomato first. When we talk about tomato production, a very broad topic. Tomato production is a very broad topic, topic that you have to know. But one of the factors you need to know is that when you are dealing with tomatoes, you have to know the basics, very key. The basics is very important because whatever I'm coming to teach you here is not a matter of just theory. It is a practical theory. Something that when I teach you, when you go to the field, you can do it. While just reading what you have jotted down, you are, you understand you. So we are dealing with tomato products. It's a broad topic, but you have to know the practical aspect of that and the part of theoretical aspect of the tomato production. So before you are going to start with the tomato production, first of all, there are certain factors you need to consider. We have factors to consider. So you will never stand up and say, I want to do tomato production. Then you just start. Where should I start from? You have no idea about whatever you are going to produce. That's what a whole lot of people that they do. Because the person has no knowledge about what he or she is going to do. And then once the person just stand up and nah, says, I want to do production, that person has no idea. First of all, you have to get the idea, have the concept of whatever you are going to do. So the little advice that we will give it to you, a directive that we will give it to you, you will be able to do it. So know the factors before you go in for a production. One factor of a production is the availability of land. The availability of land. But first of all, sometimes we consider the market to be first before the land matters okay first of all before you consider your land you have to make sure that you have the market sometimes some people will call me and ask me oh bro i want to do tomato production i want to do this production but i want to ask i want to do tomato production when i do, do you think when i do this production i'll get market for it i'm at maybe what I'm at maybe, uh, what do you call it, Takrade. I'm at maybe uh, Kumasi, I'm at maybe some place. Do you think I'll get market for that? Yes, why not? That's why I said that before you want to do any product, you have to consider the market. Even sometimes the market is the key, but even if we are doing a production at a peak, at a peak season, sometimes the market people will chase for you for the produce because if they will not purchase her there's no way our market women will move from ghana and go to burkina to go and purchase tomato from burkina to ghana for what reason look at the distance from ghana to burkina but the market women travel all the way to Burkina to purchase tomatoes during the peak season, the dry season, because some is not available here. So in, in tomato or in some crop production like this, high, some highly consumed product, you don't have to think, say, you don't have markets. There will be a market because if there isn't a market, even your, cost, your buyer won't travel from your country to another country to go and convey tomatoes. Likewise, Togo. When our season is near here, Togo people travel from Togo to Belgrade to go and purchase tomatoes. Do you understand? We have Togo cars. If it's a time when the season is now over Belgrade, there's a whole lot of Togo cars. Everybody can purchase tomatoes from Togo. 
ever, ever, ever have to purchase tomatoes. Because of the availability of that product, and the shortage of that, so likewise to our own to see a figure and a cup, okay, a cup. So that is the factors you have to consider. Yes, that's the factors you have to consider. So, the market is one of the factors. You have to make sure that you have market for that. Because the availability of market is the key. Make sure that the produce that you are going to produce, you have market for it. Do your small inquiries. Go to the market yourself. Just find some of the market units. And just go, oh, I have this product. I want to put it with you. Will you buy it? Create some bias around and the ones it's ready to just contact them sometimes if you also consult we that we are in the game already we can also give you some bias to purchase your foods secondly as i said availability of land land availability is one of the factors always make sure that you have a land which is situated around uh, source of water, you understand the water body, because you need to have a source of water around your your area. So availability of the land is very key. The closeness of the land to maybe a river, any water source is key. So you have to consider that. Someone will say, okay, I have the land, but I'm not closer to a river source. I can drill. Will I drill? Okay, fine. Depend on the irrigation system you are going to operate. So it's idea too, but make sure that you have water source. Even if a walking distance water so that you can convey water to the field is very key. Under the availability of land, under the availability of land, the availability of land talks a lot. When we talk about land, the land talks a lot. The land is not only the play, the, the, the plain ground over there, no comprises a lot of stuff. So when you are talking about land, then you are dealing with soil too. Because the supportive medium, you understand? The soil is the supportive medium for the plant growth. So once you are talking about the land, you have to also consider the soil. You don't just have to go in for any soil. We have special or recommended soil type that is suitable for the kind of production you are going to do. My brother, when you mean concern for three so could be a day while I'm here with do you understand? You can't cultivate in the sandy, a loose sandy. You understand? A building sand, you say you are going to cultivate. For what reason? So you have to know your preferred soil type. So the soil type is the key under the land. So sometimes someone may ask, what are the, uh, what do you call it? The recommended or the kind or the type of soil we have to cultivate inside. It's very important. You also have to consider, after you consider the soil type, the soil type which is preferable for your crop production is you have the sandy loam, the sandy loamy. We have the loamy clay. We have the loamy clay. We have we have we have the red sun clear so there are some types that we can use for the cultivations as I was saying sometimes the most preferable soil type that we normally use is the sandy loamy that's the sandy loamy an amount of sand an amount of loamy soil Sometimes you can also go for a loamy clay. The clay, the clay shouldn't be a compacted clay. You know we have loose clay. A soil that contain amount of clay, as our own like this. You acquire a field and then you realize say, there's amount of clay in our soil, which is cool, because once you water it, or once you you get rainfall. It can stay within the soil for some time. Yes, it doesn't get dry easily. So, such soil is okay. But mostly, we say the sandy loamy because of what? The drainage access. So, 
for some time you consider the loamy soil or the loamy clay. The clay shouldn't be a white clay, it should be loamy clay. Yeah. And it shouldn't be compacted. Good. So you consider the land, the soil type. So under the soil type, under the land, you have the soil type. So once you are done with the soil type, you also have to consider the topography. The topography of the what? Of the land. So that's why I said, if we are dealing with the land, there's a whole lot of things that goes under the land. You consider the soil type, you consider the topography. When we talk about the topography, the topography simply means that the, the, the nature of that particular land. The nature of that particular land. You know, we have a flat mm -hmm. land, which is another topography. We have extremely sloped. We have lightly sloped. So sometimes you consider the land should, shouldn't be extremely sloped. It shouldn't be like this. It should be slightly hot. Look, the land should be slightly stroke or hot, flat. But sometimes you consider the slightly slope because there should be an a drainage access. As in, when once you have you experience too much rainfall, there should be an access of the excess water from the land. When it is flat, sometime in point, the rain or the water can stack in the in the land which is not ideal. So you have to go for a slightly sloped land, which is okay. So that is about the land. You are not done with the land. Once you are still on the land, and you are on the soil type, the land and the soil that you are using should be a productive. A productive soil is always a fertile soil, but a fertile soil is not a productive soil. You can ask me why. why. A productive soil is always fertile, but a fertile soil is not productive. The reason why I said a productive soil is always fertile is that you can have a soil type. Which can give you yield. Plus, you can have a soil type. If the soil is productive, it gives you yield. A yield and you as a yield. But who is what you cultivate on a certain land? You can cultivate on a type of land. You can realize that the land is very fertile, but it can't produce. Who has a CB Sada? Any male from from my territory. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why we said a fertile soil is not always productive, but a productive soil is always hot. Fertile. Because as a CB ha, a tumi should be an emo be a productive. It's a productive dia then a one hundred row a fertile. But what minya soil be not a fertile, but it will produce a mouth. It's fertile. It can't produce. So you have to check that that land is productive. Well, how can you check it? How can you check it? The checking is in this way. If you want to know a soil is productive, definitely once you go to you go around for a, a land, you have to check the crop production around that area. You get it. That's one of the key ways you can realize. Oh, is this land here okay? Or do an inquiry. So assassin, send assassin it here. What the you want? area here. They can, those who have been cultivating around there, they can give you, I mean, exact thing. So, we'll be a old age, man. It's in the age, what you are seeing. So, depending on the crop that we are doing there, you can also tap into that. And once you realize that the land is a virgin land, you don't have to give it too much of fertilizer because it already contains 
it already has fertility. It has fertility. So once it is a fertile, you don't have to always give too much of what the fertilizers to the cross because it has it contains fertility within the within the soil. So you don't have to give too much fertilizer. That will help you for your great growth. That is for the land. Any question about the land? I said how many things on the land? The soil type, topography, topography. and uh, whether the soil is productive. The, top, the soil type, the productivity, and then the availability, where it is situated. Very key. You get it. So after the land, let's move to the variety. So the third is the variety. Variety of seeds. So we are talking about the variety of what? Seeds. Once you want to do any production, my brother, these are some of the things that are worrying our farmers out there. Variety. 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 My brother, if you are not able to choose the right variety for your production, you always run at a loss. And you will come back and tell me that, oh, my brother, when I did the cultivation, I didn't see any results. It's because of the varieties you choose. That's why you have to choose variety wisely. Get recommended varieties for your crops. You understand? Good. You don't have to go in for any variety like that. In tomatoes, we have so many recommended varieties. Which Alipat can recommend for you? That go for this, go for that. What are some of the varieties? Good. Varieties of seed for tomatoes. One. Cobra. F1. Cobra 26. 34. Mona. We have Jaguar. Nana. The man can never say something. We have Kiara. Anaya. Plenty. These are F1 seeds that you can go in for. Cobra 26 or 34. Mona F1. Jaguar. Kiara. Anaya. Blah, 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 blah. Do you understand? Mm. Good. So the variety is the key you have to know before you choose. So get recommended varieties as stated here. You know what? Under the variety of seed, note, under the varieties of seed, we have two types of seed. Under the variety of seed, we have two types of seed that we grow. We hold the determinate varieties and we have the indeterminate varieties. Don't get confused. Though. Under the variety of seeds, we have the determinate and we have the indeterminate. I'm cleaning it though. We have the determinate And we have the indeterminate. Do you have any idea about these two? Do you have any idea about these two? Yeah. With the determinate, can you explain it to me? That one. 
you can go into a o in a open show and then it anything you to and uh, it will have thank you that's one of the typical example you can give with a determinate as you said you can grow it open field with an indeterminate we normally grow it under a tunnel either greenhouse shade net blah 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 you can grow it under so normally we say determinate varieties are the bush type the determinate varieties are the what the bush type Okay, what I can say about the determinate variety, they are the varieties that are normally cultivated open field. Even though they can be cultivated under the greenhouse and the shade net. But they are open field variety that you can cultivate. At the same time, it's a bush type. It's not necessary that it requires taking. It's not necessary that it requires trellising. It's the bush type. So you can leave it. Once you are once you, you maybe you do your etting up, you can leave it without sticking it. It will give you the yield. Unlike the indeterminate type, whereby that one you have to give it taking or you have to give it trellising. That's why it is normally cultivated under the tunnels, not the greenhouse or the shade net, because you have to give it trellising so that it can trellis. Because the more it trellis, the more it yield. The more it climbs, because they are creeping, they climb. So the more it 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 uh, the more it climbs or the more it trellis the sticks, the more it gives you what yeah. the yield. That is why it is determinate type. Even though indeterminate type, that's why it's indeterminate type. Even though indeterminate type can be grown outside, outdoors, but it requires taking. So if you think you can grow indeterminate outside, then you have to better give it steak. Or you will not harvest. <laughs> you will not get the harvest you're supposed to get. Because you have to culture it as it's, it's needed. You have to culture as it's needed. Every variety has its culture. So determinate has its culture. That's why it's bush type. And if you take in determinate type as your variety to grow, that's your. You have to watch it by trellising or sticking it. Any question about that? Mm. So the Cobra 26, 34, or 34, they are in determinate type. Mona, determinate type. Jabba, determinate type. Kiara, determinate type. Anaya, determinate type. We have indeterminate varieties over there the rows and the other other varieties uh, yeah you can go when you ask for indeterminate varieties they will give it to you it is there so these are the determinate varieties that we know they are hybrid these are the hybrid varieties we also have our local varieties Aside the hybrid, you know, there are different between there are different between the hybrid and the local varieties. Sometimes someone will say oh, local variety. No, we don't produce seed here. The seed are all foreign, they are all foreign seeds. But once we cultivate and it's response to our weather condition, then we classify it to be a local variety. We, we don't produce seeds here. They are imported seeds, they are foreign seeds. But once we cultivate them here and they are able to resist the weather or they are able to stand, stand the weather condition, then we call it to be a local variety. Because even the local varieties we know that we have been cultivating for so many years from the era time are the cherry tomatoes, the small, small, the fadier veggies. Do you understand? Yes. But these types, are hybrid and they are foreign varieties and once we cultivate them and it's okay for us we give it a name that we think we can call it specifically we don't know its name or we give it names so that this is petofik this is rasta this is kunku this is this this is akuma this is apple 
We give it names. Yeah, ni mani ni ana na namba. Oh yeah, they are now cosechi. We must have cosechi. Kung kung cosechi. Kung 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 da. Yeah, we are the four frobi. We give it a name because of how we can call it. We give it, we identify the variety mm. ourselves. Good. So these are the hybrid varieties as stated. These are the hybrid varieties as stated. We also have the local varieties, as I mentioned earlier on. We have the peto, the peto fake. We have the peto fake. We have the peto. We have the techimentia. We have the kunkun. We have the uh, akoma. We have the apple. So they are names that we have given. You get it? They are names that we have given. Mommy, I'm going to go. I'm going So that are the varieties you have to know. Any question about the varieties? Mm. Any question? My brother, no question. Can I push? Can I proceed? Yeah. Okay. Another varieties of seeds. Each seed has its yield though. Each seed has its yield. You have to know. The yields are not equal. Every seed has its yield. So you have to consider that. Okay. What do you have to do about seed when you are going to buy seeds? Always I recommend these companies to my fellow farmers, they can buy seeds from the technicians. They can buy seeds from technicians. They are one of the companies that I really like their varieties. Yes. And I also, uh, yeah, that's what I can say. Technicians, they have a nice variety of seeds. And uh, also Sakata too also have a nice varieties of seeds. Sakata, they also have a nice varieties of seeds. Technism, that's aggressive. They also have nice varieties of seeds. So once you are choosing a variety, you, are, you, are, you know the yield in which you are going for. And you know hybrid seeds. We have no high you know hybrid seeds, high varieties of tomatoes are always 50 grams. If you have a variety of, if you have a hybrid variety, they sell a hybrid variety that contains 100 or 150 grams, my brother. It's not true. <laughs> I know a hybrid variety, which is a 50 grams. That's what I know. Good. So hybrid varieties are always 50 grams. I don't know if there is other hybrid variety that has 100. I can't tell. But I think what I can give is what I've said. So I'm coming. So that you don't buy fake varieties. The next step we have to follow is after the variety, then you are going to the practical aspect. The practical. What goes under the practical? The land preparation. First of all, you have to consider this first. Cropping calendar. Cropping calendar, land situation, plant nursery, or seedlings. Management. Four, transplanting. So once you are done with your land, your 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 variety, your 
your hot whatever it is your your land your variety your market as a factors to consider you come to the practical aspect of the production and the practical aspect of the production you consider the first thing to be your cropping calendar when i hope i'm making sense yeah. you consider the cropping calendar when to do the cultivation you don't just have to stand up and say I'm, I, I want to do cropping or a production and you just pick any month or time to start a production. You are wrong. Choose a specific date, time, for you to be able to meet the peak season where the money lies. Because I always say there is money in the soil so we are dealing with money when it comes to farming no when we are talking about agriculture you don't just the way of life it is an agribusiness now the farming is an agribusiness do you understand we just don't farm to live farm to eat no it's a business itself so you have to consider the peak season as where the money is so you the cropping calendar is the ideal and i have the cropping calendar it's 50 cities so if you need one you just have to contact me so the cropping calendar gives you the exact date you have to start the production any question can i proceed yeah, yeah. so in the seasoning you in the year, you can do three crops within the year, as stated in my cropping calendar. Starting from December to November. It's three seasons. The first cropping season starts from January. But you have to know that in December, you begin with your land preparation. That is out. January is where the production starts. So December is on land preparation. January is on nursery. So 10th to 15th of January, you begin with your nursery. 